Greetings, welcome to Meet Me at the Live Painting Table. Today we're gonna, I'm super excited for today. We get to continue painting some Oathsworn characters, but we've got all our characters painted up. For those of you that didn't get a chance to see it or are waiting and they don't want things to be spoiled, I can totally understand, but I was able to get to the first mission and Colin and I played the second mission live and it was an absolute blast. We had so much fun doing it. We're gonna be painting the armory system. It's a really cool system in this game. It's right here. It's the armory system. What this is, is you're able to create your character Characters to be what they are and what they're holding. All the characters come with specific weapons that are that you're gonna be able to equip. So depending on what you've decided in the game to get, you're gonna be able to paint those. And like I said, every character has them, but we're only gonna be painting the ones that the characters we already have. So for example, here's the ones for the exile. Look at all those weapons that guy can use. Well, he is an exile. He can probably hit anything he wants. We've got the warden has a whole bunch of weapons as well. And so each one of these is a unique style of weapon too. So if you have a sword for one character, it may look one way, where if you have a sword for another character, it might look a little bit different when that character is holding it. It's a pretty cool system, and it really makes each of these characters come alive. It's really neat. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint these up. I'll, I, I'm going to show you what I've done already. I did do one character's whole armory system just to get a feel for how it is, but we're going to paint one, and it's going to be fantastic. So let's go down to the painting table and check it out. We have, right now, this character is done. I know he has no arms, but that's okay. This is the blade. The blade is all done. He comes with a sword that he's supposed to hold two-handed like this. And he kind of pops in just like that, and he's all set to go. That's the deal, right? Okay, and he's supposed to have an arm there, but it doesn't matter. But you can then take these off and swap these out. For example, if he decides to ever go two-handed, so two swords, check this out. You pop that in, and then you take the other one that's a sword. Where do I have it? I have them all right here. Here it is. And he can put that in just like this and he's all set to go. Check that out. This is how cool this is. So I could do double swords for this guy and he could have that. Or maybe it's a sword and a dagger. I've got a dagger for him as well. And he can put that in right there. And now he's carrying a sword and a dagger as he moves around, depending on what he has built inside of his class, which is really, this is super cool. I'm really a big fan of it. On top of that, check this one out. I've even got this. This is like a big giant glaive. So the glaive hand would stick in like this and just pop in where it's supposed to go. Now these are all push to fit, so you don't have to glue these at all. And I've found the more I've been using these, the more I'm intrigued with this system and I don't even need to worry about paint, uh, gluing them. At first I thought I'd need to, but I don't need to at all. So this arm I think is gonna pop in. Let's see if I can get this thing to go in right. There you go, just like that. So it's in just like that. And all I can do is put this arm in, but to do that, this right down here is two different joints. So this pops in there as well, so it can kind of swivel a little bit, and then I can get these both in the right spot once they're in. Now that one's not going to change, and there we go. Now I've got him with this giant glaive thing, this, uh, this halberd, which is what he's actually using in our game. And if that's not all, if I don't want him with this halberd, I could change that out to this axe. I mean, this is just out of control. Look at this. Now he's got a big, giant, double-bladed axe he could be wielding as well which just sticks right in there. And now he's got this double ax, which is super cool. Now, one thing I was worried about when I was creating all this and painting it up is as I'm painting it, and notice how much I'm handling these, these and I'm trying to pull them in and out and things like that. For those of you that have miniatures will know, paint doesn't always stay on these models if you keep rubbing your hands on it and doing things like that. So I did have to anti-shine this thing. This is a, basically what it is, it's a, where does it say here? Not uh, toxic water-based, top-quality acrylic paint preferred for painting armies of Wargaming miniatures. Where does it say here? Uh, Wargaming miniatures. Okay. Nope. Must be up here. It's been, nope. That's not there. There. It's over here, I bet. Basically, okay. It's not anywhere. <laughs> It's a matte varnish is right there. That's really the ticket you need to know. It's a matte varnish. So I painted this entire guy with this matte varnish. I didn't do the base. I'm not too worried about the base, but I painted him so that as I'm holding him and I'm pulling out these things, it's not going to ruin, it's not going to smear off all the paint. That's the deal. So when it all is said is done, we have all these different arms that we have painted up. That's what we did for the blade. I did this off, off, off camera already done. I did that later earlier in the week. Um, Pretty neat. So we're gonna be doing a different character. We're gonna be doing our priest. That's the one we're gonna be painting right now. I got the priest fully painted. I have all of our characters fully painted. And we're gonna paint up the arms and arms that he could potentially use. And I'm gonna show you how I did it and what I did to do it so that maybe you can maybe use my solution or you can find a better solution, who knows? Because <laughs> just because I do it one way isn't always the best. So let's go back down and take a look. 
So here's our priest. He is all set to go. I've painted him up in this kind of purplish color with some neat looking metal all around him. And he's got two arms that come off. Now I haven't anti-shined him yet. So we're going to paint these up and then we'll anti-shine them. At least we'll anti-shine these, what I have here. But I'm not going to be able to anti-shine the ones we're going to paint because, well, <laughs> they're not going to be dry in time. So we have these four weapons we have to paint. Now there's not a lot to hold on to. When I'm painting, you could hold on to it like this. Or some people are able to use these neat little things like this that can hold miniatures. And you can paint them with these inside here so that they don't, uh, so that you don't mess them up or anything. But sadly, I don't have, oh, I get this guy out of there. Well, that was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have uh, a way of holding these like that. So what I've done is I have this putty stuff. So I could use the putty to hold it while I'm painting like that. I've all found that's not the greatest. So I've just been holding with my hand right down here. That's what we did. Now we have to remember exactly what we use to paint them. That's the one of the biggest problems for this is knowing exactly what we painted. So we have a... Uh, we have gunbolt metal, or not gunbolt metal, we got this uh, gun metal, and then we also have uh, some mithril silver that we used, and we have some brown as well. So we're gonna have to use those particular colors uh, for this. The ones that are most important are the ones we use for his hand, this metal right here, and this metal right here, and yes, those are two different metals. It may not fully seem like it. And the same thing here, we have to make sure we get the same color hand, because if we're sw swapping these out, we want them to still kind of be unison in general. So we've got a potential of using two hammers, which I, is very intriguing to me. So once he's all said and done, he's going to have these two hammers, which are going to be fantastic. I don't know exactly how they're going to slot in ones like that. And the other one's going to slot in just like this. It's going to be awesome. So I'm pretty excited to use those maybe at some point. Or actually, this is Colin's character, so maybe he'll be excited to use those. We'll find out. Laquitter Gaming, it is awesome to see you. Thank you for joining the chat. It is good to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I had a chance. For those of you that don't know, Laquitter Gaming actually just did a playthrough of Stars of Acarius, one of my favorite games so far this year. And if you're interested in seeing his playthrough please go check it out i'll put a link to his channel in the description it was fantastic and if you want to see some really awesome looking ships go check his out he painted them up like amazingly they are so cool uh you did a great job on those it really looks fantastic thank you so much for all the time and effort you put into those uh he, he goes far and beyond the slop and drop technique that I, I i do in my channel so thanks for being here it's awesome to see you thank you so much for joining let's figure out what we're going to do here so we're going to grab our paints and we get some paints out so we got to make sure you get the right paints let's check them out I'm going to go from our overhead camera here. I've got, I need this metal right here. I need this metal right here. And then I'm going to need, I'm going to need a darker gray. I think I used this gray, gray ash. If not, I do have the darker gray up here that I can use. So we even have to use one of those two grays. Now, if you notice, none of those are actually contrast paints I've been pulling. I am going to use one contrast paint, and that is my Gillian Flesh. That's the one I'm going to use for his hand. Other than that, that's it. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to get our water cup and everything here. And if you're wondering what this is, this is the key to victory right here. This thing, this is the key to victory. So when I'm all said and done, after I get all of these done, let's see if I can get it down here. Um, I'm going to take my blue stuff here and... We're going to, when we're all done, we're going to press it in there and it's going to hold it like that to dry. That's our plan. It's going to dry just like that because I, I'm not going to be able to hold it as much as I want to. So we're going to paint as much as we can up to here. Then I'm going to probably plop it in here and we'll finish painting all that. We'll see how it goes. Or maybe I'll paint this hard. Well, we'll see how it goes. we got lots of different options here. Super cool. Oh, of course. <laughs> we quarter gaming. It was awesome. You're welcome. It was awesome. All right, let's see what we can do. So let's go down to the table here and start. We'll start with this one right here. We're going to take, I think we'll start with, I always try to start with Gillian flesh. I like to get my flesh tones. Now I do have some of my uh, things here. Sorry, I got paint all over my hands. Um, we do have that too. We need to get our snake bite leather for that because I always use that for that. Sadly, still waiting for Orthsworn. I swear my UPS guy plays a, and plays my campaign games before he delivers them. <laughs> oh no, I hope you get it soon. I hope you get it soon. Uh, I know a lot of people just got back from Gen Con. I sadly did not go to Gen Con this year. I should have. Looking back on it now, I do regret not going. But uh, I just, it didn't work. It didn't work and I was hoping it would have and I should have gone, but I, I chose not to. I chose I chose not to. That was, that was, that was my choice and I should have knew that I should have gone. I'm sure it was a blast. Sounds like a lot of people had a lot of fun. Um, so we're going to grab all this stuff. I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way so we can get our paints right up here. Here we go. As you can see, this thing's all got a lot of paints in it, but it doesn't matter. It's all dried paint. 
so it's not going to be a big deal. We're going to start with our Gillian flesh. Let's shake that up a little bit here and be able to paint with it. And we're going to put these in our little paint thing that I got from Ryan because, as you can see here, we had an issue with our blood red or blood angel red last time. And if people remember, that was that was a joy. All right, let's get these all started up here. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. So we're going to get these painted up. This is going to be sweet. So now I'm going to be able to swap this guy's arms out at any time for anything I want. We're just going to put the Gillian Flesh just right up onto his arm get that painted in there. I'm not going to do anything special other than that for his flesh tone. We're just going to call it a day once that's done. There's no reason to do anything more than that. Paint it up. Did anybody else get a chance to go to Gen Con? If anybody in the chat has gone to Gen Con, I would love to hear about what I would love to hear what you were able to see, try and be part of. Um, I did get a chance, if anybody knows Kanji from Kanji Studios, I got a chance, he did a recap, his recap. And it was, I have to admit, one of the best recaps of Gen Con I have ever seen. So if you're interested in seeing a good recap of Gen Con for a person, please go check it out. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below as well. He did a fantastic job of recapping what he did at Gen Con. He hung out a lot with Rob and Mel from Rob and Rob's Gaming Table, which is fantastic. Um, Mel actually does a lot of great painting uh, on miniatures. You can check out her painting stuff as well. She's a fantastic painter. If you ever get a chance to check them out, go ahead and do it. And they're fantastic. I didn't go because you weren't going to be there. Oh, Dan. I love it. That's so nice of you. Some I don't believe that. But that's amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. You're the best. Uh, all right, we got his armed hand done there. And I think we're just going to do all the hands. I'm going to do the other hand and all these. I'm just going to get all the Gilliam and Flesh done at one time. We're going to do an assembly line here. It's what it's called. So we're just going to use one color. Whatever color we're using, we're just going to use one of it. We're just going to keep using the one color. We're going to use Gilliam and Flesh and go through all the models here. All that we need to do. In theory, that should cut down on time because I'm not trying to go from model to model and changing the colors. I can keep the same color going. This is how I used to paint all of my Warhammer figures. So whenever I had to paint orcs, I'd get like 10 orcs and I'd put them down and I'd go orc flesh, orc flesh, orc flesh, orc flesh. And then I'd go, okay, now I got to do like red, red, red across the shields and things like that. It was easy to do that way because you get it all done super fast in theory. So painting, no matter how much time you try, it does take some time. And that's the deal. Let's see here. A little bit more. There we go. Now I hit right here on this hand. If I paint on this, I'm not too worried about it because I'm going to be painting over metal. And that's just going to totally eat through it, so I'm not worried about it. Also, if I hit the this rope part here, this handle, again, not too worried about it because this uh, my snake bite leather will go right over it. Not again, not too worried. There you go, got that done. That one's done. Andy's update was awesome. Yeah, if you get a chance, please check it out. Next year, I plan to attend. Well, I will be there as well. I am planning to attend next year. I'm going to ask for the vacation time, and I'm going to get it, and I'm going to go, and it's going to be awesome. All right, let's continue with our Gilliam and Flesh. Um, I would have liked to meet some of the people of the games I have. <laughs> it would have been kind of neat. And I would love to meet all the people that I have on met, that I've now started hanging out with, like on stream here. I don't know some of the people here, which is pretty neat to be able to maybe potentially see them in person at a place like Gen Con. It'd be really cool to see. Uh, that'd be awesome. Let's see here. Get this finished up here. And boom, his arms are, if that one's done. See how fast we're going on these hands? The hands are all done on that one, I think. Yep, totally done, just like that. And then we got this last one to do here. Let's see what we can do here. Train and small rats are done. Moving on to paint the brood mother. Oh, there you go. Um, I did say no spoilers, but I mean, if, it, it, and the, all you knew was names there. You knew nothing else. Um, I, uh, I I finished all my terrain. I will bring it out and I will show you shortly after I get these hands done. I was able to finish all the terrain for Old Sworn. Um, again, I did it super fast. Not super like I'm not looking for painting awards or what do they call that, the Golden Brush Award or anything like that. But it's done. It's done and it's ready to go. And so when Colin and I get back to it, we will get back to it. Now, sadly, Colin uh, and I, due to family uh, conflicts, are going to be unable to get together for a few weeks. But that's okay. We've got that'll give everybody a long time to potentially get Old Sworn and start playing it, and so that people can catch up. Because I, I know personally, I'm a person that doesn't like my games spoiled when it comes to those kind of campaign games. So it's hard for me to not be able to join in on a live stream like that if the uh, if I haven't already played that one. But I have my train done. I will show you what I did with my train. It's right over here. Let's get it. 
on the planet to get to it. Whoa. Okay. Because it's all on the floor around here. Well, that's the latest game I've been playing. So you got a train box. Yes. Now, everybody saw the trees, if you saw my playthroughs. Um, the trees are done. But I did get a chance to finish up all of the the these things, the, the walls. I didn't do anything spectacular to them. I just sprayed them white. And then I did a null and oil wash all over the thing. And then I dry brushed them white. And then I just painted, I think it was, what I use? I used uh, this color. Plague Bear Flesh. I used that on all of the, like, just moss in the things. That's all I did. That was super easy. Pound them out real quick. Just three colors done. Then I took the houses. Same type of deal. There was a little bit of catastrophe at the houses because I spilled my paint all over the place, but that's beyond the point. So here's the houses. The houses are also done. Same thing I did for the brick that I did with the walls. Uh, same with the same color here. Uh, this is all just, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, man, if I was a skeletal horde or something. Yeah, skeletal horde is the top here. This is all snake bite leather, all of the wood. And that's it. That's all I did. Snake bite leather, this, and yeah, done. House is done. I'm totally fine with them. I think they're great. And I'll probably be using for Dungeon and Dragons at some time. Pretty neat. I love how uh, I love that we got this big, huge box of terrain. It's pretty neat. So that was that was the train. It's all done. And then, like I said, I did my trees. But I think I showed them on my last stream. Here's just a couple of them. Here's just one. One in one of the trees. I did this on this. I showed on my last stream. Again, super easy. Um, I think I even used my airbrush on this. I airbrushed this whole thing brown and then added some green. So that was the deal there. Pallet bone on the roof for me. Then I wash. It looks good. Yeah, I, I, I'm i starting to do less of that. I'm just starting to do just one color. If I have a, if it can do, be done with contrast, it will be done with contrast. <laughs> or those uh, speed paints. If it can be done with speed paints, done. I don't need to worry about, uh, I, I'm getting farther and farther away from using any type of washes. But, you know, sometimes you have to use them. All right, let's get back down here and continue with this guy. We've got some mallets we have to finish. So I'm going to keep this part of the mallet the same color it is. I'm just going to leave it the color of the primer. I'm not going to change it, though I do have to paint a little bit in here because apparently I hit it with the color as I was coming off. I must have hit it right there. Not a big deal. I got my oopsie paint. We'll just put in some oopsie paint. And interestingly enough, this is prob this is going to be a different color of oopsie paint than what I've got there. But when it's all blended in with my uh, null and oil, it's not going to matter. So if you watch, I'm going to paint this on here and it's going to be a different color once it's all kind of, it's a lighter color. My oopsie paint is a lighter color than the primer I use, which is okay. It'll be totally fine. But there we go. Now I gotta teach my camera to stop zoom, stop trying to autofocus. I hate you, camera. I forgot. I didn't turn that off. Oh well. There we go. So we have all these done to that aspect here. This look just look at this right here. This thing looks amazing. Look at this thing. I'm super excited to paint this. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this, but it looks really cool. Ha, huh, that's awesome. It's like a pole arm or something. I don't even know. Got to keep myself hydrating. A lot of water. I actually brought a water thing down here this time. All right, since I painted that one, we'll start with this one so that can dry. I'm going to paint the inside of this a darker gray. And I've got the darker grays. Now, I, sadly, I don't remember which gray I used right here. So I'm going to have to try. Does it look like uniform gray? I think it's uniform gray, doesn't it? Looks like uniform gray. I don't think it's ash gray. It might be ash gray. No, it's got to be uniform gray. We're going to put a little bit of uniform gray out there and see what happens here. Am I wrong? We're about to find out. This could be a bad idea here. But that's okay. Remember, that's what oopsie paints for. And besides, if I touch it and I don't like it, I can always wipe it off. Oh, I think we're okay. I think this was the right color. We're just going to get in there, paint this entire thing that color. Just the part that is sticking up. I don't want to paint the underside, the part that's kind of not on the upper part here. There we go, just like that. There we go. If you want it to match uniform, sounds right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking uniform might be the way to go here. I think it's the one that I used. Again, if you're not, some people I know keep like a list of what they use to paint things, especially back when I was doing Warhammer, because you never know when you're going to get another set of those guys that you might want to paint up the same type of color. So you'd always want to keep your color patterns for your characters or what you use to paint them. I didn't really used to do that. I, I, my guys were all just about the same anyway. 
So it didn't really matter. But that was, of course, back in my Warhammer days. I don't do Warhammer anymore. I think we're doing pretty good here. All right, and then we just bring it down. And I'm using more of the side of the brush. That way I don't go over the recessed area here that I have. There we go, just like that. When we get to the end of the video here, I think I've got a, I got a surprise. I'm gonna, I got a surprise coming. I'm going to show everybody my surprise when I get there. If there are other people painting, what are you painting right now? I know one person, <laughs> Dan said, I think he's painting his, uh, oh, what, Dan, Dan's working on the, on Oathsworn. I know that. Um, is Laquitter Gaming painting anything right now? Or is he just enjoying the night? Let's see. And if there's anybody else out in the chat that would like to. Now, I do have to say something. I don't know if I I forgot to mention this when I started this. I had to reset um, the chats to you have to be a subscriber because when Colin and I were doing our last game, we were getting a lot of spam and a lot of like from just stuff I did not want there. So we I had to change that to that. I, I, so I apologize for those trying to type or something and it's saying you're not able to. That's that's the deal why I had to change it. Subscribers only are able to chat. Uh, I, I wish I didn't have to do that, but because of the last stream, I felt really bad that it was just kind of people are spamming through the chat that shouldn't have even been on there. It was it was really sad. So meh. so that's sadly where we've come. That's that's the state we are at right now. It is really too bad. Yeah, I always am. I always say I'm going to do painting journal, but never do. It help, does help to keep color mix recipes if you come up with a good color. That is correct. That's exactly. Uh, that's that's my problem. Eventually, I decided I wasn't going to do that. I just said, forget it. I don't. I don't mind. I'm just going to keep them how it is. I'm totally fine with that. And there we go. I think we got this done. There is. A, I did do a couple oopsies, but that's okay. That's what the oopsie paints for later. We're just going to fix it up. There we go. All right. That one's done. I'm going to lay it so, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stick it right in here, because that's what this is for. Right there. I'm going to put it. Pow. There you go. It's like Thor's hammer sticking out. Boom. That's the deal. Barron's painting journal equals eyeball plus that looks close enough. Exactly, Dan. Exactly. 100%. 100%. That's what it is. <laughs> I never know what I'm doing. Never know what I'm doing. We'll go to this one next. That's gonna be the next one we're gonna paint up here and see how this goes. Let's see, I get a, get a better point on that. There we go. Get some more of this gray paint on there. Paint it up. Boom, just like that. Across the top. Perfect. I'm going to wash that off. And the only reason I'm wiping it off is because I wasn't happy with the point I had on my paintbrush. My paintbrush's point was yucky. I want to change it up. I want to make sure I had one. Flip it over. Do this side. I'm just going to hit this side here. Like that. And then I'm going to grab some more paint. And then hit this side over here. The one thing I wish I did is I wish I would have figured out. I don't even know what some of the big announcements coming out of Gen Con were. Um, I sadly missed that. So, I mean, it's, uh, but that's okay. Um, if anybody's interested, we do a, I do a co-op chat with Steve and Kanji every Saturday morning. At least we try to do it every Saturday morning. So if you're interested, check out the One Stop Co-op Stop stream channel. We, all the three of us, get together and just chit chat about something gaming. And I think this week we are going to go over Gen Con like news and what we, what we know and happened and Kanji's going to fill us in on his first Gen Con experience. And I think we're also going to go over uh, some experiences we've had at Gen Con. Um, and I think it'd be really cool to uh, kind of reminisce a little bit and hear about how Gen Con went for those that it, like, I think it was Kanji's first one. So it's pretty awesome. I'm going to run that across the top a little bit. And that one's done now too. There we go. Second hammer done. Let's get another piece of the blue stuff. Here we are. Boom, and we're gonna flip that over and boom right there, done. Okay. 
Now that one might tip over and fall over, not the end of the world. There you go. All right, now I gotta go to this one. Okay, what are we gonna do here? I think we're gonna, I think it's time to start on these silvers. We're gonna do all the silver here, but then we're gonna do this glaive thing as well. Hmm. That's okay, because I'm gonna try, I'm gonna have to hold it from here for about as long as I can. And eventually, maybe I should do all this, then stick it in and paint the silver. Okay, I think if I do the mithril silver at the end, I can do all the rest of this. There we go. That's our plan. We do everything but mithril silver on all of these. That'll be what we do. So let's get our gunbolt metal out. It's not gunbolt metal. I always call it gunbolt metal because uh, in Warhammer, uh, the GW paint always used to have a paint called gunbolt metal. And that was the gun, that was the metal that everybody used to use. And I still have to pour this out because sadly I don't have, uh, my cap is, is dead to the world. It's clogged with paint and that's okay. Got a lot of metal there. Someday I'll get a new paint one of these anyway so that's okay i've had this forever ancient ancient paint grab some metal throw it on here we're going to paint the arm this arm part right here is all we're going to paint now that's going to be our plan we're going to paint this arm if i can get it to focus come on let's see if i can switch this out a little bit here see if that helps Does that help that helped a little bit yeah that helps a lot we're going to paint this up just like this now, if I do hit the part where I'm going to put the shine, the silver mithril metal or whatever, it's going to be a shinier metal. It's not a big deal because I can paint right over that. I don't want to hit the hand, though. That would be a catastrophic boo-boo or catastrophic boo-boo, catastrophic. Catastrophic, is that like when a cat's in traffic? Because that'd be terrible. Right up to the edge. There we go, just like that. I'm going to try not to paint the pole here i don't want to paint the pole the other thing we don't want to hit so i'm supporting my hand on my hand and that's kind of how i support myself you always want to try to support yourself with your paint otherwise your brush is kind of going all over the place willy filly nilly that's the deal i'm going to paint these with this metal here there we go paint it up boom all right that one's done move to the next one and i can set that down just like that because none of the paint is touching anything and grab my thor's hammer here and <laughs> which is pretty sweet it kind of looks like it oh my gosh if it was this almost could be thor i mean he's even got metal and everything all over him pretty sweet again we're just going to do this this like arm plate here it's going to be the deal again i don't want to get the shaft here if I can prevent it good enough don't want to hit the arm the hand I think I hit the hand oh well all the way around like that keep going until we hit the other side over here and I did hit a little bit there, which I can fix in Jiffy here. There we go. That one is done. Now I don't have to put it back in Thor's hammer anymore because I've got an astronomical amount of it's been dry. The, the hammer's dry, the other part. But I do have metal on my hand. That was awesome. Broccoli Docklands, always good to see you. Oh, let's see here. Hi, all. Hope things have been going well. Looking forward to hanging for a little while. Oh, it's good to have you here, Broccoli Docklands. Always a pleasure. Uh, we're painting up the armory system for uh, Old Sworn. Uh, again, I'm trying to keep it as spoiler free as possible, so I'm not doing anything that has to do with any hidden boxes or anything. These are all things that come with the game. Um, it's the, where did I put it now? Here it is. So my armory system is what we're painting right here. It's pretty cool. It does actually come with a book, which is kind of neat. I don't think I talked about the book. So it's got this book. Let's see if I can find one. So this is what I'm talking about, even though I kind of explained a little bit more. This is kind of neat that they actually have pictures of it. So here, we're doing the priest right now. So here's the priest. And as you can see with my glaring thing there, so you can pop these off and it shows you which arms are going to go where. So he's going to always pretty much have this one hanging out. 
But then as we do this, I'm going to be able to put in any one of these hands along with this one, which is going to be pretty cool depending on if I decide to use a halberd or halberd, or if I decide to use like a staff, I'm guessing, of some kind or one of the hammers of some kind. This is like the great mall that he starts with. And then this could be one of the other two malls that you might be able to pick up in the game. We'll see how that all plays out. So that's where we're painting. That's what we're working on. We're kind of working slowly through it. I am in the process of painting up their arms right now, and I'm working on the metal part right here is what we're working on right now. The part right there. And this part, this part right here. Oh, that's great. There we go. Oh, no. Come on. There we go. We're just going to paint. We're painting this part up right here. That's the deal. So again, we're doing our best not to hit the shaft of this weapon. That's the plan. There we go. A little bit more. Here we go. A little bit more. There we go. We got that. And now I'm going to try to, just going to try to touch through the outside here and see if I can get this ring here. There we go. And a little bit more on this side. I think we're done. I don't think I got anything on there. No, I didn't. Wow, I'm amazing. I don't know how I did that. Okay, perfect. Look, metal done. Awesome. Metal done on that one. Sweet. I find if you pray with a hammer in each hand, it's more effective. <laughs> that It's kind of funny you should mention that. It must be why he has that one hand that he uses more often that's out there like that. And all the rest just kind of stick in like this. I think this one's going to stick in just like that when it's all said and done here, which is pretty cool. I mean, oh my gosh. I just love this armory system. And it's just going to stick right in. Let's see if I can get it. Come on, slide in there. There we go. Oops. Oh, awesome. Dropped in. Doesn't that look cool? Well, look, you get the point. Get it? The point? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh, sometimes I just can't, uh, I can't even explain what I'm thinking sometimes. Oh, that was too much fun. All right. Yes, yeah, the point. There it is. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Before everybody just jumped off the stream like, oh, okay, that was corny. I'm done. Again, just painting that one metal part on this arm here. Around, going around, around, like that. Keep spinning this every time. Well, sometimes you just don't see what you're doing. You just paint and hope you hit it. And that's the deal. A little bit more. A little bit here. There we go. I think we're gonna be good. Let me just kind of touch this again up here. There we go. All right, I think we're good there. That'll work for that one. That one's done. Perfect. I took one D4 psychic damage from that. <laughs> Come on! My joke only did that much damage? God, should it have 1d6, maybe, if anything, right? 1d6? <laughs> uh, did you magnetize your KDM? Yes, I did. Um, I actually did a video on that. A f maybe about a month back, more in a sec another, maybe two months. Um, I don't think I have that piece with me anymore. I put it away. But yes, I did magnetize them, and I actually did a small video on it, if you're interested in checking out, yeah, checking my live stuff. I think it's there somewhere. Showed up for the painting stage like corny don't corny don't change my man. Oh, I'm not gonna. <laughs> there's no way I can. I've been like this for too long. I'm an old guy now. I just <laughs> there's nothing left for me to change to. All right, we got the metal on. We got the hands on. We got the 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 dark gray on these. So now it's time to put 
the snakebite leather on this. Let's get some snakebite leather going. Let's remove the Gillian flesh over to there so I don't drop it all over the place. Grab some snakebite leather. Put it in here so I don't screw that up. And open it up and put it on our models. That's the deal here. So love this paint. Snakebite leather. Here we go, get some more. There we go. We're going to go up and down this all the way to there. There we go. Oh, I hit the silver. That was awesome. And we'll be able to dry it out of there. Let's see. There we go. Okay, we're good. We're good. Again, not the end of the world if we hit it. Let's see here. Keep on going around. A little bit more. Done. There we go. And that is done. Now we're going to grab this one, do the same thing. Do some more painting. Snake by leather up here. Try not to hit the hand if I can. Ooh, if I hit it, eh, not the end of the world. Again, I'm only make, I only want these to look good from a little bit a ways away. I don't want you don't need to, I I don't expect people to grab these and look at them up close because that is not the kind of painter I am. So if you're looking for a good painter and you don't want to paint things yourself, um, in the description of this video, there's a guy named Bill. Bill is a commissioned painter. He paints amazingly well, way better than I ever will, um, and he is willing to paint your miniatures for you. If you, I think his his information is in the link of this video, so check it out. Right now, he is helping us out. He is painting the boxes for our Osworn because it was cool that I was able to, on our second mission, be able to. Uh, have Colin open the box and I had it fully painted and ready to go. Uh, but it's kind of, it, it was kind of cool, but it's only like he said later, it was like only his surprise. Like I already knew what it was. I had no idea what it was going to do in the game, but I already knew what that was coming out of that box. So this way we're having uh, Bill paint these for us. And then when we open them, we're both going to see them for the very first time. And it's both me and it's going to be live on camera. It's going to be absolutely epic. I am so excited to see these models when they come back because Bill has done a fantastic job. If you're interested in seeing some of his work, uh, he did uh, some of Colin's Cthulhu Death May Die videos. He also did the models from our uh, Descent game that we played together. Uh, he did those as well, also along with the Townsfolk Tussle on One Stop Co-op Shop. He did those as well. So if you're interested in seeing kind of how he paints, check it out. He he does any type of theme, which is really neat too. But yeah, good stuff. That's beyond the point. We're I, I'm painting <laughs> the slop and drop technique. He paints the awesome miniature technique. Uh, the Barrett Rule, look for him a good 50 feet. Exactly. That's the technique I am teaching you all how to paint as. I want you to be able to stand 50 feet away from your miniatures and see if there's paint on them. That's the deal. Okay, that's a kind of an exaggeration, but I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's keep on going here. We got our snake bite leather on these. These I am not. Oh, maybe I'm. I'm going to put some snake bite on here and down here. If you can notice, there's a couple parts on this model that have some, but then I'm going to paint this that darker brown, and then this is all going to be gold. Wait a minute, I might put gold on the books in the middle here other than that that's all gonna be silver that's the deal all right let's get some more snake bite leather on this need some more snake bite leather let's put it in the pot there we go that's where we're getting snake bite leather Wah, you glob it on there love it And I'm not too worried if I go over here a little bit because this is going to be painted with a darker brown, so it'll totally go over it. Usually paints that are darker in color can go over other colors. So if you do mess up and you're painting a darker color later, not a big deal. That's another reason in theory, if you have, you, I always try to go, um, oh my gosh, how many times am I going to hit my silver on my paint thing over here? I'm going to move this before I hit that again. Um, 
that's why I try to start from the inside out, but then I also start from light to dark. Because that way if I do kind of make a mistake with the lighter paints, I can touch them with the darker paints. Also, if you go over something, coming up to it with a darker paint is easier than going over it again, with going not up to it with a uh, lighter paint. If that makes any sense at all, it probably didn't make any sense. I need to worry about make more senses. Again, we're just putting some snake bite leather in here where he's holding that. Just like that. There we go. And a little bit down over here. Then we're done with our snake bite leather. See, I kind of went over on that one. Oh, I touched it. That was awesome. That's a great idea. I'm kind of going a little bit over, but that's okay. I'm going to sneak in there a little bit with that. And I'm going to kind of just go over this again because I touched it. I know I did. I don't know where I touched it. So we're just going to kind of wear, 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 wear across that. There you go. Just like that. All right. Now this one I am going to put down a little bit different. I'm going to place it down like that. And I don't think it's going to touch. That's awesome. Do you not like the hardened leather from Army Painter? That's a great question, Dan. That's a great question. You know, I think it's one of those things where I just haven't used it enough. And I just think snake bite leather to me always has that, you know, I could have used either one of those in that and it would have been just fine. I just, once I started the paint scheme for a, a, a thing, I kind of, I'm going to keep it the same. And I'd started using the snake bites for this. So that's why I'm using it. Um, I, it has its purpose for sure. Uh, there are some times when I wish I'd have a more red tone for my leather. And so, yeah, then I would use it. Um, but I don't know. I think it's just because I've always used snake bite leather for so long. It's really good. I like it. I do have it. I have the hardened leather right here. I just, I, I, I haven't moved to the speed paints yet as much as I've been using my contrast because I've been painting with them for so long. Great question. Great question, though. And don't worry, I had a long-winded answer for you. Super long-winded there. Real good at that. Real good at that. Get some more water. We got one more left to paint. That's this one. And then we're going to go back to the metal. Put some snake bite on there. And let's see what we can do here. Hold this up. Here we go. Whoosh, straight down there. The same handle as the other one was. More or less. More or less. And I don't care if I hit down here either because I'm going to paint that for like gold. There we go. That one's done. Now it's not touched down there. And just paint up here. Oh, still hit it with my finger. That was awesome. There we go. And I think that's done. That's where I hit it with my finger right there. All right. Just like that. There we go. A little bit more. Perfect. Done. Okay. That's done. Neat. Neat. Just like that. Awesome. Y'all good. I moved to hard leather. Hardened leather. Sorry. <clears throat> and now use it more than snake bite for some reason if it's all good very true very true i think once you get used to something or what you find a value in something you're going to start using that more as the deal howdy barrett how's it going it is going great ryan always a pleasure to see you thank you so much for joining we are doing the armory system i'm going to hold this up about five times during the stream from old sworn we are trying to make all our characters look like what they are when they get their weapons in the game if you notice when we were playing last time um, if anybody joined us on the live stream, Colin and I got some new weapons. We didn't have the mo the, the modifications for them, so I actually had the blade staying in this big sword, even though he should have been having a halberd. So this way, we'll be able to have the cool new weapons for our characters. Going to paint them all up. That's going to be really neat. And right now, we're working on the priest. He's got these four right here. This one, this one, and this one are the ones we're doing right now. That's the deal. So good to have you here, Ryan. Now, always, now, always nice to see you. Always nice to see you. And we have to try to match these tones right here. That's the deal. We have to try to match what we've already painted. We're going to move to, we're going to continue going here. We're going to make this all silver. I put my hand in this enough. We're just going to, I'm going to start using it. Painting the glaive metal part here. And I'm just going to, it's just going to be all metal. There's no reason not to. This guy's going to stab a lot of things with this. Now, I don't want to get the books. 
Like I said, I think I'm going to make the books gold. I think that's going to be our plan. I think they look kind of cool. We're going to go around this like that. If I hit the book a little bit, not the end of the world, I can just paint some gold over it. It is a metal color. They'll just paint right over the other metal. And another thing about these metal colors you want, want to try to do is you always try to scrape with the thing. So you, otherwise it looks... I just want to make it look like one free flowing act movement with the brush. Otherwise, you're going to see streaks with your brush as you paint through it. I hope that makes sense. Now, right here, if you notice, look how you, kind of it looks. It's got you can see like where the paints kind of glob together. But now, if I swim down, it, it's oh, there's actually a cut in the model. That's kind of cool. But on this side, you can see it. You can see how it's kind of one. It looks like one shade going through there. It's not like a bunch of metal that's kind of bunched up. You don't see the, the brush marks. Again, I'm just going to kind of free float around. And now that I got it on there, I'm going to scrape it off nicely with it. There you go. Over to this side. Right next to that book. I'm going to spin it here without touching anything. There we go. It is a little bit tougher without having um, some place to hold on to it, I've noticed. I've never really done anything like this where I've kind of painted like a piece of a arm or something that isn't actually attached to the model. I never was one of those people that was able to do that. There are people out there that would, there is people that I used to know that would actually spray paint the sprue for a Warhammer miniature or a group of guys, like spray paint it all black and then just paint the entire sprue, then clip it out, assemble it, and where they where they assemble, where they would clip out, they'd quickly just paint that and be done. And I'm like, I, I don't know how you can do that. I never could. I had to always assemble my models to see kind of how it was all going to fit together and where things were going to go. And that was just the way I had to do it. All right, we're going to paint that metal around here just because. I was thinking about doing brown there, but that's okay. We're going to do metal all the way around. That's done. Now, let's see if I can put that down. Well, I think I would put it in so if you notice, I've got these neat little things I've been sticking my models into if I need to, because I don't want the paint hitting the ground. Again, I don't have something it's like attached to. So it's a little bit different. Now this, what are we going to do with this? Okay, what are we going to do with this? First off, that is sweetness. There's some golden, I'm going to paint that gold in there. I think that's going to be awesome. But I might paint the silver around it. And then these look like candles almost. So I'm actually going to paint those yellow, and I'm going to paint these like a light gray, and maybe use those as a candle. And this I'm still all going to paint metal, I think. I'm trying to figure out what that even is. Let's look it up here. Maybe it's stone. It looks like it might be stone because it is like held together by this rivet joint right there. So maybe I'll keep it stone and just paint the... Maybe paint this part brown and then put some metal on there and metal on here and leave all this just stone and paint the in paint this gold and then of course the candles that's what we're gonna do okay wow i didn't even notice that okay i'm gonna get my super small brush here i've got a super small brush this is my triple ot brush it's got three zeros on it that's how small this brush is three zeros it's my three zero series seven brush this is what i use for really small things because now remember we're just going to try to paint those these brackets here just like that there we go or you know what it could be this could be wood maybe i'll paint this wood because again it's like potentially maybe it's wood stone with metal brackets would look cool yeah i think you're right i think we're going to keep it as stone Oh, wow, that's a big piece of stone he's going to be carrying around. But it doesn't look like wood. It looks more like stone to me. I can't imagine him hitting anything with this thing. That's going to be ridiculous. Again, one more metal on here. There we go. Perfect. And at least three colors blended with the candle flame. Oh, that's that's hilarious. You're a funny man, Laquitter. So if you want to see really good models, go check out Laquitter Gaming. Um, I'm going to show you the slop and drop technique where I'm going to paint them just with with uh, with with uh, 
<laughs> I'm just gonna use yellow from my contrast paint. I got multiple colored candles. Come on, man. Besides, these candles are too small for that. I know he's kidding. But yeah, you can paint multicolored flames. Actually, if you do that, it looks really cool. I have done that in the past. I did make a little boo-boo on those candle on the thing though, so I gotta fix it. Fix this up here. Make my boo-boo paint. My mistake paint. And just hit right here. There you go. And hit a little bit down at the bottom here. Because, trust me, I'm sure only I would ever know that that happened, but I would know that that happened. There we go. And now that I know that this isn't really... I was going to use gold down here on this, but I think we are just going to use metal. They do have to remember, this is like a dark fantasy, so there's not... I wouldn't say there's a lot of gold like flying around. Well, I say that now, and then look at this guy's armor. All gold. All gold. But I'm going to guess on their weapons. Maybe they weren't... Because these weapons I know break and things, so I, these these weapons aren't very good. They don't hold up against the the evils of the forest as well. We're just gonna paint that metal at the bottom. We're gonna do the same thing for their other thing here. There we go. Their money is iron. This is true. This is true. Their money is iron in this game. Because iron can hold up in a battle better than gold can. I don't know how that guy's armor is holding up. Well, sometimes it doesn't hold up. Sometimes he doesn't make it. There we go. I think we're good. Yes. Okay. Though I am still going to paint the book gold because that's going to be cool. This I command. I sound like Sepentor. This I command. A little bit of gold here. There we go. Ooh, drop that on the floor. That was awesome. Nothing like dropping your brush and banging your camera. That's amazing. Oh, that's what you call high quality work here. The gold right in there. All right, should we get on that side? Let's get the other side. The gold I use, I always use this Retributor Armor Gold. There is another gold as well. There's like a, a layering paint that's a brighter gold. I had some of that too. Wasn't satisfied with it, so I don't use it because I usually just base coat things and that's it. I'm not looking for super good quality work here. I just like to get on the table. And this way, I, I really like to make sure that I, this is show everybody how I do it because I really feel mine's such a basic approach to this that then hopefully other people that are thinking about trying to do this don't get will get a chance to actually want to do this. Again, the initial startup cost when it comes to painting is always the hardest thing about getting the paints and getting the paint brushes. But once you get it all, if there's ever a color you want, you just go out and buy the color. If there's a brush you want, you just go buy the brush. I've been using these brushes for years. I used to use a lot of, I used to buy new brushes all the time from my local like hobby shop, like Hobby Lobby or, or Michaels or Joanne Fabrics. And then I found these. I bought four of these. These are, don't get me wrong, these are expensive brushes. These are about 20 bucks each. If I remember right at the time, they were actually cheaper. Now I think they're, they might even be more now, but I haven't had to change this brush out in ages. I've been using the same brush forever and it holds a point perfectly fine as long as I put some water and just rub it on, around on my paper towel. I've always had a point. Never had an issue. Pretty neat. Love these brushes. All right. Oh, we're going to put some gold in here too. That's right. Let's get some gold in there. Need my gold again. I'm going to put it in here so I don't spill it. I'm going to move this guy. I don't need him around. That's a little too much, I think. Oh, and I'm not going to use that brush. That's an out-of-control brush. That's my best brush, but I need my fine brush. Because, again, we're just trying to 
hit this thing in here. I don't really know what it is. I'm guessing it's a statue of some kind. Just like that. There we are. Get some more gold on there. There we go. And I'm sure there's our leg over here. We don't really see it. Like an idol in here or something. There we go. All right. Boom. That's almost done. I want to get a little bit more. And now this is all going to get null and oiled, except for the candle on the side here, which is what we're going to paint next, because that's really good. Painting a friend is usually a good time as well. Very true, very true. Painting with people is always awesome. Um, that's why I'm really excited to keep on doing this. This is a lot of fun. Because I only get to paint and get stuff done. I get to hang out and chat with all of you, which is fantastic. It's one of the highlights of my week. Woo. Love it. Let's keep going. We need to... Okay, now we're going to put... Now we're going to do the candle. Okay, so I want to paint these candles white. Now I got this apothecary white here now sadly it all sits at the bottom of this thing so we're gonna shake it up and i bought these really cool things thanks to people people taught me and see these are the kind of things i learned from people i picked up some of these where do they go they're hiding on me they back here somewhere no where they go oh here they are so i picked these up these are army painter mixing balls. You put them into some of your things and they shake up the paints better than if they were just to hold them. So like now I can just kind of rattle this around in my pot and it works out really good. I miss the sump pump. Why have we not heard it lately? Oh, Dan, you make me laugh. Why have we not heard my sump pump? That is a great question. If I lower the volume on this thing a little bit. But the reason we haven't heard the sub pump on the in the background is because it is so deadly dry here that even when it does rain, it's not enough to get through the soil. We, it's been so so dry here in Minnesota, super dry. So that's why you haven't heard the sub pump. So yes, with these mixing balls now, I'm able to get this these paint off the bottom of these cans so much faster. I used to sit here and go, and like just, it was, I felt like I was gonna die. I felt like I was probably like one of those exercise things, like sitting in the thing, trying to get this thing to be done. But now with this neat little ball in there, it goes a lot faster. It's almost done. I can also spin it around there. And that's the way he gets it off the bottom. Pretty neat. So there, all done. Wow. Super cool. So that I, those are kind of neat. They picked them up. Now you can also you're supposed to also be able to put them in here to help mix up those paints. I haven't done that yet. Besides, at some point I'm going to retire this entire set of paints and get a new one. But I haven't yet because I just I haven't needed to. I don't have a reason to yet. Um, but and maybe I'll retire them and get a full set of uh, of what do you call it the, the speed paints instead of what I have there. That might be what I replace that entire set with. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Lots of there's a lot of things I could do. We're going to take, I think we're going to take our smaller brush again and use that. Because these candles are super small. Right here, we're going to paint them this apothecary white. Now, apothecary white actually looks almost more gray than my white does. But that's okay. This will be just fine. Because unlike the gray that you saw, I'm not going to be putting any type of null and oil on these. I'm going to leave them as is. So this white will be just fine. And that'll be the plan. No, nowadays, the only thing you probably hear kick in in the background is my air conditioner. Around there. There we go. Boom. All right. 
Now let's get the yellow. I'm just gonna use this. We're not gonna use three different shades of yellow to make the top of a candle. That's that's a lot of control. Now I'm gonna tempt fate by uh, not putting it in the holder. We'll see how that goes. Because we're just gonna do a little bit on top. Just like that. Get some more. Got a plan for a new video coming up here. My son and I are finally going to do our Marvel United playthrough because we have the Sentinels done. We've got everything painted and ready to go. And of course, he and he came back from camp. Well, Chris came back from camp sick. So we're not doing that right now. We're hopefully going to get it done, but not right now. There we go. We got our candles done inside of this thing. There you go. Stick it up. Perfectly fine. Well, done. So that's going to be next week. We're going to get that up next week. But in the meantime, uh, I did send out a vote for my Patreons. If you're interested in ever having a say in how whatever we play on this channel, please join my Patreon. And the link of it, I think, is in the description of the video. Uh, they, I asked what they wanted to see played. What campaign they want to play. Because there's a lot of different games I'm playing through that I don't ever get back to or I really want to get back to or something else comes out. And right now, Old Sworn and Stars of Icarus are just like right at the forefront of my mind. But with Colin... Uh, Having, and I just having conflicts, not being able to get together. Um, I wanted to get something else out there. that Maybe something I've played before, or maybe something new. And uh, we are it, entering back into Shadows of Brimstone. I'm super pumped. I've actually recorded some of it already. Uh, I'm going to continue recording maybe after we're done tonight for a little while. But super excited to get back Shadows of Brimstone. One of my, every time I play it, I keep forgetting how awesome that game is. Um, we're creating a great narrative in this game. And it's going to be a lot of fun to get back into it. It's going to be super, super cool. So let's see here. Where are we? All right. I'm putting away some of the paints that we've used. And now we're going to come back and kind of finish these, these off. We're, getting, we're not getting super close. We're getting really close. All right. We need to get some, um, what do you call it? Wildwood. This is it. That's the deal. That's it. Dan just joining now. So maybe Baron answered already. But no rain equals no sub pump. Yes. Yes. No rain, no sub pump. That is the deal. No rain, no sub pump. We don't have any rain. All our grass, our grass is like super dead. And super, that's that's just too bad. All right, here, open this up. Oh, I can get a bigger one. Than that. I can use my back to my normal brush. There we go. We are going to hold it like that and paint just this pole. And this is a really dark brown, and I'm okay with that being for the pole. Totally fine with that. Even though it's called wild wood, I rarely use it for trees nowadays. I used to, but then I realized it's like so dark you don't really get the texture of the of the wood anymore from it. So I kind of stopped. Just really a dark brown to me now. All the way up to the top, there you go. Perfect. There we go. Okay. One more part we need to get, and that's inside here. This is, this, you know, I have more I'm thinking about it. This can't be metal or wood. I mean, or stone. Come on. He hits one thing with this thing, it's going to break off. But that's okay. We're going to do it because I think it's pretty sweet. Do the plan here. Around. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. That's done. Oh, I hit it with my hand right at the very end. Barf. There we go. Good. Good, just like that. I keep time during these streams via the sub pump. Now, <laughs> I am left ambling, ambling aimlessly along with Baron's narration. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my gosh, you crack me up, Dad. Thank you so much. 
Oh, that's funny. Morgan Knight, hello. Greetings. Welcome, Morgan Knight. Good to have you here. Thank you for joining her. We're painting up the Osworn Armory set. We're working on the priest right now. These are the armor pieces for the priest. I've got a halberd. I've got a couple of hammers and a giant pokey thing. That's our deal. That's the deal. Wildwood has to go on super thin, in my experience, to, to try for a more wood grain look, but still dark. Totally agree with you, Liquider Gaming. Totally agree with you. All right. Oh, we got more pole. We got to do another pole here. And I'm going to do just the opposite of that. I'm going to put it on super thick because this pole just needs to get done. There we go. Let's get some more. There we go. Get in there. There we go. There you go. I guess one there. No, I didn't. Oh, where these pots are. This is one of the problems with pots. You never know where your paint actually is in there unless you're looking at it. There you go. Perfect. All right. More brown. There you go. We're good. We're done with that. So we only really have that mithril silver left to do on these, I think. Oh, we have a little bit more metal, I see. A little more metal. I'm finally finished building my insert for massive. Congratulations! You have... <laughs> that must have been an amazing feat to finally be done with. Finally finished building my insert for massive darkness. So I have a clean space to get back to painting my destiny's minis oh my gosh you're painting your destiny minis that's amazing those minis are super small <laughs> like a grain of rice that's out of control you know i painted two seventh continent minis and i said i was never gonna do that again because those were super small and they were just so hard to do though i, I i'm it, it just i had to use a smaller brush was all it was but still super small minis that's that's amazing you're just painting destinies i'm pretty i will never paint my destiny's miniature never um, they're just going to stay gray. That's the deal. Gray minis for them. Nothing more. I do have to paint some more metal. I need, hopefully this metal hasn't gone bad on me over here. No, it has not. So much of it over there. How could it go bad on me? Because we have to get the... Oh, this one. Does it even have an end here? Oh, yeah, here it is. Here it comes. For an end. Perfect. Okay, that one's done. Put the metal on this one. There we go. Those are done. 15 millimeters, but they are so hard to tell apart when they are gray. So splash color really does help. I will, however, probably be blind by the time I'm done. Very, very true. There are more than one time when I'm sitting there, I'm wondering what mini is supposed to be on that board, according to the app. I know how that works. Now, for those that don't know what Destiny's is, a one to three player game. It can be played two, like in teams of two, I think. Um, I really enjoy it. I have uh, all, I have that and the expansion. Uh, from the was it the desert expansion one um, and you're basically ever it's a competitive game in a way but you're really not attempting to thwart other people's issues you're trying to just finish your mission before anybody else's which is why I like it uh, and you're exploring the world that is in front of you for that story and you're trying to uh, complete your quest your life your your mission quest on that that 2v2 2v2 if you have the expansion that's it yes and then 1v1v1. One one one. Yes, exactly. There's like it's it's up to three players, which is interesting. It's only up to three players. Not even four players, which normally is what you have like in a game like that. What really sold it for me was the mission where you ran into somebody from uh histories and it was really cool that I actually saw that person like that person was actually in the game. And I thought it was really cool. It really like made it jump ahead and I was like, oh my gosh, that's really cool that this character's in the game. No, but I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not going to say anything about it. But that was, I thought, really cool. So, anyway. 
<laughs> we go back down. So I do recommend the game. I like it a lot, if, especially if you're like competitive games where you're not actually trying to like uh, where you, where you could potentially do something to totally ruin somebody's life in a game where you or like you got a person that's against like two people gang up on somebody that just doesn't happen in this. Why am I going to use this? Yeah, we're going to use this. We're going to use this now. That's going to be the plan. I've got null and oil here. We're going to put now. I got to get this stuff painted first. I got to paint that first. We're going to do my null and oil. Ah, we're going to put that over here. So here comes. Okay, we're going to see if we can do this. I am going. I'm going to. This is how you don't do it, but I'm still going to do it this way. I'm going to get my shining silver here, which does come out the right way. I'm going to bring this back in and pin that silver all the way to the other side of the board, of the world there. I want that around. It's going to go right here. There we go. Shining silver. This is, my, this is my, my, my plate mail. Or not my plate mail, my splint mail underneath, or chain mail, whatever you want to call this stuff. We're going to paint this that color. That's the plan. Just like that, all around. Now I'm going to paint kind of where you peg it in, just in case I'm missing, in case I would hate to have part of it not painted if it's pegged in there, but it's not really going to matter. Now when that's like that, I am going to set it down. It should be okay. That one should be okay. You're doing metallic paint, correct? Yes. Yes, I am. I don't do any other type. I don't do like uh, non-metallic paints. I just paint with metallic paints. There is a way to paint uh, metallics with non-metallics, and it's kind of an interesting concept, but it's a lot of different paints together to make it happen, and I just paint the paints on it. Paint it around. I'm, like I said, I'm going to paint in where kind of things are going to attach, just in case I miss anything. All right. Now, what I could do, if I really wanted to be cool, what I could do is around, so like one of like where the hand is, I could paint a little bit of this there to make it look cool. Or do I have, or for this, for example, I could like maybe put a little bit of that silver on there to make it stand out a little bit if I want to. But I'm not going to. We're not going to be that clever. I'm going to give it a little bit more depth and stuff to that metal, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to paint this silver all around it. We're going to call it a day. That that's the deal. Did I? Where is his hand that's pointing? Here it is. If I painted that also. Yeah, I did. Okay. I'm noticing that there might have been a cloth piece there, but that's okay. We're just going to paint it all silver and call it a day. There we go. No cloth on this. Remember, the cloth has no cloth. Kind of funny. Again, we're going to go over where some of the peg goes in just because I'd like to make sure I got it all. All right, those two are done. That one's done, I think. And I just have this one left to do. Paint this up like this. Just like that. Oops. Oh, and I do have a question for the chat. Let's see if anybody's got an answer. Ready? Here's the end. Here's the question. So, in theory, if you are playing Shadows of Brimstone, let's just say you're playing Shadows of Brimstone. Um, just, just, you know, hypothetically speaking, let's say you're playing Shadows of Brimstone. Oh. That's awesome. Circado. Uh, <laughs> perfect timing. Perfect timing. So you're, let's say you're playing Child of Brimstone. Um, that, uh, see, there you go. I met, it was like the subliminal messaging here. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and you, let's say you're playing with the Sorcerer. Just, just pretend you're playing the Sorcerer. And she has the like uh, Elemental Blast. That's a range that you can use a range attack, right? That's what you can do. Yes, goodness, yes, in case I forgot to put up a comment, sorry. Yes, nice to see you, nice to see you. Currently playing Shadow Brims on, see, that's the deal. That's how it all works, and I did. See, so, telepath, I got you. Um, so say you're playing, you, you have Elemental Blast. It's like one of the things. You, you, have, you have four mana. You have four mana you can use. Um, well, you also have Fireball, and Fireball can use a ranged attack. But yeah, and that only costs two mana, and so does uh, the uh, Elemental Blast spell. It costs two mana. 
Am I only able to do one ranged attack, though, each turn? Or can I cast both those spells as ranged attacks? That's my question. And then, on top of that question, say that character has a gun. Can they then make a ranged attack with a gun, too? I'm going to guess that you only make one ranged attack each turn. That's your turn. But if not, I would love to hear because I was, I was this may be that this may have uh, have come up in a playthrough I'm doing right now, <laughs> and uh, so I want to make sure I get it right because I can't exactly remember how that goes. I'd, and being able to like make three range attacks in a turn, two because of mana, two because of mana, and then just boom, seems a little bit much. Seems a little bit much. I think you only do one range attack turn, but I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Am I wrong? Tell me, Sarkato. Tell me, Sarkato. Am I wrong? Meanwhile, while he is doing that, I am going to continue these on. We are done with all of them. We have them all looking like this. We have our metal. Uh oh, we have a problem. Really? I decided to paint that metal? Are you kidding me? Okay, it doesn't matter. Because these are different weapons. So just because I painted that one metal doesn't mean that these can't be painted different. Okay. Super good. Super good. Steve! Good to see you. Good to see you, Steve. Steve has made it. His streak is alive. I don't know if we need to call it a streak anymore. I just called consistency now. <laughs> It is awesome to see you. Thank you for joining, Steve, as always. As always. I think it is different attacks. I, yeah, that, that could very well be. Um, very well could be. Uh, thank you. I, I will, because I know you get, like, free attacks to be able to do, like, action stuff. Anyway, uh, you're dual-wielding ranged weapons. Uh, you're, I'm not dual-wielding ranged weapons. I'm casting spells. Casting spells. The consistent streak. Very true. Consistent. Consistent streak. And we are going to get these things now. I'm going to... Null and oil them to pieces. That's going to be the deal. Everything that was painted with our normal paints now is going to be null and oiled. And we're going to stand them into these things. This is where these things now start coming in handy. We're going to put this right here. We're going to paint this up with our null and oil, just like that. Okay, so free attack as the spell, the, a range attack, I think, is fair to do. That's kind of what I was thinking. That's, um, I, I was really thinking that might be the way, too. Very true. All right. Now I've got this in here. That's the deal. I think I use the same weapon twice. That's very true. So it all, and that has to do with the amount of hands you have. So yes, that makes perfect sense. We're going to null and oil all of this. And that's a lot of null and oil. So we're going to put some up here on the... Oh boy, lots of null and oil fire on. All right. For the world, I will fix all that. Now I've got a lot here on this thing. I will fix that shortly. Yeah. So we're going to move some of that to the other models, other pieces here. A little bit down there. Excellent. Soak some of this up. Put it over here. I'm just going to paint it on there. I don't know I'm worried about that right now, but I want to soak up some of this null and oil that went out of control. When paints go mad, that's the deal. There you go. Okay. The thing is, though, with the Nellon oil, you really need a lot of it to really make this silver pop out, which is interesting. I don't think I let the silver dry well enough, but that's okay. We're going to set it like that. Now, we're going to take this. This is the deal. We're going to place it right here. Put it right there. Make it stick there. Now it's going to dry right on this thing, because I'm tricky like that. There we go. We'll make it dry right there. Now this one on the other hand, I'm going to get another ball. And we're going to put it in here. There we go. So we got that like that. But I don't have to worry about that yet because I can hold it like this and paint all this stuff. Baron, you use melon oil like, uh, like it's a weapon. Never seen anything like it. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of control there by melon oil. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, let's wash a little bit off this time. All right, so we're going to get a little bit on our silver here, a little bit on this metal. That, that's a lot better, a little more controlled this time. Love it. There we go. There we go. Get it in there. Okay. Now, we have that. We have what we think is this. I really think that this is going to be just this big piece of uh, wood up here. Now, the trick is I don't want to hit that candle with it. That's the deal. Because that really adds depth to the model. That's really what a shade does. It really gives depth to these models. I want to make sure I don't hit that gold because it'll dilute. It'll make the gold kind of 
go down a little bit and it's color there you go around like that and you don't ever want it to pull that's the other thing about your washes wash if it tends to pull top of this thing and down the side a little bit here but not trying to hit that candle at least try not to not the end of the world if i do don't think i did there look at that thing looks pretty sweet huh how cool that thing looks the metal looks good everything looks fantastic now we're going to plant this thing plant this thing right here use the hand to kind of plant it a little bit here good i'm just going to push it in there i'm going to take a little more nail and oil and kind of dab on where i kind of touch there there you go now i have one thing i tried to do was paint the Nellen oil on after I had it on here and it did actually fall off, so it was a little tough. But I did forget to do the back part here, so I'm just gonna touch this a little. Bit. I know it's off camera, kind of, but there we go. All right, everybody gets some Nellen oil, that is exactly right. Nellen oil is amazing. We're gonna rotate this, get the next one ready. We're gonna get these things done here, and I got a couple more things to show you, and we're gonna call it a night. We get our next one. We're gonna throw our piece of tap, tack up there. Now this one I am going to paint a little bit like that. No melon oil for me. You're trying to quit. Oh, how can you quit melon oil, Steve? Steve is this is the best thing ever. Melon oil is amazing. GW has changed the formula of their washes. Acts more like a contrast. Runs into the textures and stains the flat surface. Less, less, plus smaller bottle, same price. It. Oh, oh, they've changed now. Has it changed since the one I have? I don't remember. No, I bought this just recently. So yeah, it's the same. It's the brand new stuff. All right. Yeah, it's it, I, I I don't know. I've never really noticed the difference. I just keep flapping it on there like like it deserves to be there. Slap that paint on there. Everybody loves it. Now I did paint a little silver on the hand, sort of. One thing you can do, use nail and oil to cover that up. <laughs> You'll never know. So we're going to put that in there like that. And now we're going to need the hammer. Hopefully this works. Not going to work. I don't want it to come off. Really buried in there. There we go. One side. Spin it. Like Tailspin. Never watched that show. I was, You know, Tailspin was never really one of my... Uh, Disney Plus afternoon shows that I watched a lot. Watch DuckTales and Darkwing Duck. Those are awesome. Again, I'm just kind of soaking up some of the extra because we don't want too much of this on here. I know it's kind of real hard to see as I'm doing it. But I do want the depth a little bit, but I still want it to be. There you go. To have. I don't want it to pool. That's the deal. No pooling. There we go. That one's done. Okay, Thor's hammer is complete. It's sticking up right there. Got a couple left. We have where they go. Did I drop one on the ground? That's very well could have. Well, we got this one. Oh no, no! I was looking for their hammer. It's right here. <laughs> I gotta know what I'm doing. Uh, super recent. Oh my God, Darkwing Duck. That was my childhood. Yeah, it was. Let's get dangerous, right? Oh, see, we're getting dangerous with some of this melon oil. <laughs> Oh, I love Darkwing Duck. Darkwing Duck was so fun. Oh my gosh, so good, so good. With Launchpad McQuack. All right. Yes, I am dating myself. I'm an old guy. All right. Plop that down there again. And this time I should be able to get everything except for his hand. We've got to do, I'm going to get all of this. Now I don't want to do the or the gold. The plan for the gold, um, that's a lot. There you go, just like that. Now we hit the gold, not the end of the world. Nothing's ever the end of the world when you're painting. I'll tell you that right now. There we go. And again, I don't want it to streak or pool. That's the deal. Just like that. There we go. That should be pretty good. I'm trying to find minis for my D&D group, but I have some interesting PCs. One is a dragonborn barbarian who wears a cocktail dress and a bow around her tail. 
Oh my gosh. That song is going to be my brain all evening. Love it. Glad you have to deal with that, Morgan Knight. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Dark wing duck. Let's get dangerous. There you go. You can have that in your head for the rest of the night. Love it. Yes, I used to come home from school and watch it. All right. Um, so your the only way I can help you out there is to go to, what do you call that? Uh, the Hero Forge or something. But those minis are pretty expensive. But if you have a, if you have a printer, a what do you call them? One of those uh, 3D printers, it's not the end of the world. Cause I think you can get like an STL for a decent price. Um, otherwise, you never know. You might be able to find something on Etsy that can do it. My friends found some stuff on Etsy. They're looking for a... One of those rabbit creatures, Harbinger, Har, 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 Haragon, I think is what they're called. And she found one um, that actually fit her person, even had a top hat and everything. Pretty cool. All right, we're going to put this in here now. I'm going to try to put it in there without, I'm going to have to touch the top here. There we go, it's in. So now I'm going to have to just put some more Nellen oil on top of that. There we go, and we're going to put some Nellen oil back here. Just like that. There we go. And boom. That's the deal. Oh yeah, I forgot about Hero Forge. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I do know they're pretty pretty expensive. I actually just finished painting my son's miniature up uh, for him. Well, he was at camp. That was one of my surprises when he came back. I was able to finish his miniature for him. For Dungeons and Dragons. Um, sadly, then, of course, he got sick, and we didn't get to play Dungeons and Dragons this week. Because <laughs> he was sick. <laughs> this is supposed to be Dungeons and Dragons Day, but he's, he's, kinda, he's not feeling the great. So there we go. We have all of our minis, I think, to a point of awesomeness, at least the parts that I need to get painted. There are a couple things we're going to do now um, that are going to be able to help us in the future. There's a couple things I still need to finish. Um, I don't think there's enough Nellen oil over here because never enough Nellen oil on the silver, on the, on the mithril silver stuff. Because it never really shows up the greatest unless it's really kind of got that dark in the recesses type approach there. There you go. Okay. There you go. I don't know if I've seen cocktail dress on Hero Forge though. I I don't think so either, Robin. Robin, I, I'm not. I don't. I've, I haven't actually looked for a cocktail dress on Hero Forge, so maybe there is. All right. We have all of our uh, our bowl o uh, weapons done. We're gonna put that aside. I'm gonna have to let that dry because there's a lot of uh, stuff on there. There is one more thing I want to tell you about that I'm not gonna do right now because I ruin it. But all the gold, when you're done, when you do gold, I always like to put Reichland Flesh Shade on top of it. It's a red shade. That's how I get the shade for this guy. A lot of that was kind of the red on top of it um, is how I do that. That's the deal. <laughs> Steve's about to find out if they've got a cocktail dress on Euroforge. That is awesome. I, <laughs> you'll have to keep me updated on this one. You'll have to keep me updated. All right, so we have these done. That's done. We're going to let those dry. But in the meantime... We have still our priest. Now, like I said, these are all gonna be pushed in. At the beginning of the video, I was talking about how when we're using these miniatures, I'll show you again. Um, like for example, I did the blade. The blade is fully done. He's got all his, all his parts here are all finished. They're all right here. They're all done. All of his parts, look at him. He's got all sorts of parts everywhere. There you go. Those are all his parts, right? All hanging out here. So, when you're playing with these, you're going to be putting in new ones and taking out other ones. And you're going to be pushing these into their spots and taking them out. You're going to be putting them wherever you want. I think this thing goes in like, you can go in like either that or that. Anyway, um, you've got, uh, let's see if I can find one here. I got a knife. This guy can hold a knife in one hand, perhaps like this. Then you can hold like a sword in the other one. Um, you can hold it down. I think he holds it like this. There you go. You'll be like that, right? This is cool. This is really cool. Big fan of this, by the way. This is super neat. Um, if you're listening to this, uh, Toby or Jamie, kudos. This is an amazing system. Love it. Even the push to fit works perfectly fine. I've never had an issue with it at all. These things, everything stays together perfectly fine. So, for example, you got that one, and maybe he's holding a knife up here now. Um, he could do that. He can hold this knife like this. Um, but the deal is... Um, I, you're holding these, you're pushing these in and out and you're moving them around and you're touching them a lot. And so that can potentially wear on the paint itself to the point where it can wear off. So your best way to do that is, to, is varnishing your miniature and varnish all of these pieces. So I varnished every single one of these so that I, in theory, the paint should stay on there even though you're handling it as much as you are. So for our priest here with the two weapons we have already, we are gonna varnish these. 
so that they're ready to go. That's our plan. You could get pretty close on Hero Forge and then get crafty with green stuff. Oh my gosh, green stuff. I haven't used that stuff in ages. Um, for those that don't know what green stuff is, let's see if I can find my green stuff up here somewhere. It's got to be up here in here somewhere. Um, oh, here it is. It's, uh, I think, a two-part epoxy type thing. It's blue and yellow, so it's actually not green, but it makes green. It makes green really well once you get it up and running here. You're supposed to take two of these, you mash them all together, keep your hands wet the whole time, although it sticks to your hands, and then it kind of becomes a uh, something you can craft with, and then eventually hardens super hard. Uh, and I use a lot. I used to use these sculpting things I have. Um, I used to have these sculpting tools I used with it as well. Now I usually use these just to cut open boxes from UPS and stuff like that. Um, I don't use them as much as I used to because a lot of the models now are coming really well done and really uh, a lot of the mold lines are hidden or they're um, they're not something I need to worry about. Uh, the old um, when a games workshop went from kind of this resin to a semi resin stuff for a little while, it was fine cast, I think they called it or something, and it was terrible. Uh, but and it left like all these gaping holes and things in, so you had to get this green stuff in order to do it. But anyway, that's why I got a lot of it, but I don't really use it too much. Do you use a gloss varnish since painting with metallics? I'm worried the matte varnish will destroy the shine. It kind of does, and I don't mind. This is these like I said, this guy's matte varnished. Yes, he's not as shiny as he once was. I'm totally fine with that. I think it still looks okay. I think it totally looks fine with that matte varnish on here. Totally fine with it. Hundred percent. But like you said, I could go over the gloss varnish if I want. I think I do have that as well, and maybe I will try that. That's not a bad idea. Let's see if I can find my gloss varnish. I think it is this. I think I have this. This might I have Ard Coat. I can't remember if Ard Coat is a gloss varnish or a matte varnish. Somebody will tell me. I can't remember. It's been so long since I've used this. I can't remember the last time I used it. So we're going to anti-shine this guy. Because this is a dark fantasy. I don't need these guys being all bright and happy. Nobody in this world is supposed to be happy. We're going to take some anti-shine here, matte varnish. And we're going to put it out on our palette, I think, here. Move that over a little bit and put it right here. There we go. Just like that. Right there. You can see it right there. Right there. We're going to take a brush we're not fans of. I'm going to take, like, this one right here. That's oh, a double lot. i got to have a bigger one than that. Because we don't really... We're not looking to make this, like, super... Here we go. I've got this brush. I'm going to use this one. This one will be fine. Here we go. I'm just going to take this stuff and slop it pretty much all over this mini -er. That's the deal. Happiness denied. Gotcha. That's right. Happiness denied in this world. We're just going to paint this on here, but I don't want it to pool again. And I do want it just to make sure I get the whole model. That's the deal. And there's not a lot of shining anyway when it comes to this Morganite because I, uh, <laughs> the metal's already been so toned down with my Nullin oil. I'm not too worried about it. If gloss is too shiny, several paint lines make a semi-gloss. Very true. There's a semi-gloss you can use. Now, don't be fooled by one time me buying something from Games Workshop, which I thought was just a wash, which is actually a wash with a gloss in it. That was, that was, that was tragic. Now, again, with this, we want to make sure we don't have any bubbles or pools on this. And we're just going to paint the whole model with it. That's going to be the deal. That way, no matter where I hold this model, it's not going to worry. I'm not going to worry about rubbing off the paint. That's the deal. We're going to go all around his book, all around his belt. We're even going to kind of go back and behind his cape here. I don't know why. I don't even think I painted back there, so I don't know why I'd be able to go out and how I'd made him to hold it back there. Um, we're going to keep going all the way down this model. Now, I may not actually hold it from down in this area, but at least I know if all of this is covered, I could hold it from any position and not feel like there's a chance I could ruin the paint job. I normally do not do this with minis. I almost never do. I can't even remember the last time I've done this with a mini. But because this mini is going to be handled so roughly, trying to get those things in and out, I want to make sure this paint does not come off. Um, any other model I would normally not do this for. There's no need to do it because most of the time you're pretty careful with this. I mean, even using them for board games, people are usually pretty careful about this kind of stuff. And I'm not going to do the base. 
I don't feel I'm worried about the base a lot. But he can detach from the base, so that's why I want to make sure I do all of him. I don't know why. There's no reason to detach him from the base, I don't think. Maybe there is. But there aren't any new, like, boots or anything that you're going to put on this guy, so I don't see a reason to do that. And that's done. Now, I do think I might do the rim of the base because I'm probably going to be holding the rim quite a bit. But you know what? We're going to see how that goes. If I find myself wearing off the black, I can always repaint some black on there, and then I'll go back and actually do the anti-shine because I'll know that that might come off at some point. But now we got him pretty well painted up here with not a lot of I'm looking for any type of bubbles or anything that could we're good that looks good now we're going to take this i'm just going to hold it like this and try to paint it that's gonna be a bad idea i'm going to get myself with that um what if we just put it in here no because then I, I would hate for it to glue in there okay yeah we're going to do this we're going to put it on our bowl of fun is what we're going to do. I'm going to put in the back part so I know which ones I've done with this. We're going to get some more. We're going to do everything but that one part of his hand right here because I want to be able to push it in there before I paint it with this varnish. So again, we're getting all the stone. Another thing I'm going to do with this stone on this other, on the other weapons right here is when it's done drying, I am going to dry brush some white because I really think that makes stone look really cool. You can kind of see some of the white on there that I dry brushed. It makes it look really kind of, it really pops it out. I really like that on stone. Normally, I wouldn't go back and uh, uh, dry brush a lot of different things, but for stone, I do. I do like the stone to look like that. Again, we're going down this entire length of this weapon here. I'm going up the length of this weapon. Here we go. And is this the right idea? Nah, you know, it's probably not. Okay, now we're going to pop this thing into here. That. Now we're going to finish it off. Now, another thing you could get that I don't have is there's these like tweezer things that can hold miniatures and stuff while you're gluing them together. And you can also use those to hold these while you're trying to paint them too. That could be another thing you could use. But again, I do not have that. So you kind of do with what you got. That's the deal. And I think that was gonna be done like that. There we go. Okay, that looks good. That one's done. We got one left and that's his hand. That's reaching out. One more tidbit, gloss offers better protection for paint. So even so some even put gloss on their mini before best protection then matte to cut down the shine yes that is true that's another thing you can do it's a two-step process then you'd put the gloss on first which is like you said like liquider gaming said is better when it comes to protecting the minis i'm not worried about it again as i play with these if i do notice some of the paints coming off i might go to that approach but for now i think we're just going to go on this way and see how it goes um it will protect them at least a little bit and we'll see how it goes. That's going to be the plan. But yes, the gloss is the best when it comes to keeping your minis protected. But we're not going to do that. Again. There we go. The closest I could find is a noble's dress. So she will have a dress and a great axe. See? That's perfect. And it's funny you should mention that because I never thought about that. Because Barbarian only gets its armor from its deck save and its... Uh, what do you call it? It's uh, is it Constitution and Dex or something. So that makes total sense. You can just wear whatever you want. That's absolutely hilarious that they're wearing a, a dress like that. That's that bonkers. That's pretty awesome. All right, we're going to put this in here. That, all right. That does sound epic for sure. There we go. I think we're done with that one. All of my models are now... Have at least this anti shine on it, which should protect them a little bit, hopefully. Now that is that is it. But I do have one more thing. One more thing. This is super cool. I'm pretty excited for this. So, oh, I gotta go get it though. I gotta get it. Um, I was in contact. I was in contact. So we had some awesome time painting our stars with cario ships. It does sound epic, Morganite. Epicness, epicness for sure. Barbarian in a noble's dress is awesome. Um, I was in contact with the people that do that did the Turbo Dork line of paints, which is super cool. Um, 
I I messaged them after I got done with my Star Zarkarius playthrough because I really wanted to let them know that I really thought their paints were fantastic, and it's true. I think their paints are absolutely amazing. Um, and so I said, like, hey, I just really like the paints that I picked up from you guys. I thought these are really cool, and they look really good on the spaceships, um, and I'm still going to be painting some of my spaceships up. And he, the, they came back and asked me if I wanted the new line of paints that are coming out in october from turbo dark so they sent them and i got them today i didn't thought they were gonna come today i thought they were gonna come tomorrow so i was gonna do the painting thing for them tomorrow but they gave me a, a some of the new line that's coming out in october and we're gonna be painting with these tomorrow and then in september i'm gonna be joined by um one of the members of turbo dork uh painting and they're gonna talk about their paints as we paint some of our miniatures up it's gonna be super super fun i'm super excited for this It'll be really neat she rages but she still looks pretty which is why the players what the player is going for that is awesome don't let my wife hear about this or she'll probably put her fairy in a, in a dress or something no i'm kidding i know her back her she told her backstory for her character would never have that happen but yeah that's the way uh nice always fun try new art supplies exactly uh liquider gaming told me about these paints and i picked up because of him and then after i did it like i said i messaged them and they were really nice people they responded pretty quick and said like oh hey we'd like to send you these paints so you can try them out and i said well that's great can i even put them on a stream and stuff like that and they said yeah please do and like i said they're going to join me on it too so we're going to be painting some our, our stars of cario ships next week with some more of these turbo dork paints i've got uh metallics and i've got some of the turbo shifts the new ones that are going to be coming out in october which is pretty need oh sweet yeah no i need my fairy look tiny but tough this is true she does that's true oh that's sweet yes it is it's pretty sweet and those paints are awesome and i agree i've never seen paints like this so i'm pretty pumped to be able to try these out i had like i just said i just got them i haven't even opened this bag yet of them i just i got a thing saying that i did get a thing saying that i could show them off before october so i'm making sure that i not break any kind of ndas or anything like that but he said please go ahead and start using them right away and show them off and let people know about them so that's the deal. This new paint line's coming out. It's in coming out in October, I think. Um, our, yeah, coming in October. Ten new colors. This is expansion five, according to them. Um, they've got like a pink and a blue. They've got a green coming out, and these are actually going to go on top of uh, base colors of those colors. So you'll be instead of it's always being like the last ones we're using, we're always supposed to be on black um, or something of that nature. These ones, like there's a green one that you're going to paint on top of a green base, which is kind of cool. So I'm excited to see what that looks like, especially on all these spaceships. So I'm going to be painting up some more of the Star Trek spaceships next time. <laughs> Super fun. Uh, anyway, so we finished up all of our cool looking uh, guys, or, or we got all of our stuff done for our priest. He's all set to go. He's got all of his things. I do need to, um, now I'm going to do like an anti shine on these make sure that they're ready to go for our playthrough when uh Kyle and i are able to get together again next um wow that wasn't product placement i don't know what was and it wasn't even on purpose <laughs> oh that was awesome so there you have it that is i think going to be it for tonight thank you all for joining this was a lot of fun i really have a great time doing these play these painting streams with everybody it is so much fun to see everybody i really really enjoy it it's a lot of fun so thank you all for coming out we, like i said next week we're going to be doing some Stars Vicarios with the Turbo Dork new paints coming out. I think it'll be really neat. Um, and I will be, and this week we're also having a Shadows of Brimstone video coming out, which is going to be super fun. I'm already having a blast. I recorded some of it already, and I'm excited to keep on going. I think it'll be really fun. Uh, I really like Shadows of Brimstone. I keep forgetting how awesome that is. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you're excited to see what comes next on this painting stream or anything else that comes out on my channel, and oh man, I'm super excited for these Turbo Dark paints. It's going to be a lot of fun. Then, of course, I need you <laughs> to meet me at the painting table. Thank you so much for joining. Broccoli Docklands, always a pleasure to have you. Good night. Take care. Oh, Morgan Knight, always a pleasure. Baron, thanks. You're the best. Dan, you're the best. Thank you as well. Steve, thanks for keeping your consistency up. It's amazing. I'm, thank you all for joining. It is so much fun to see everybody here. Again, thank you so much, and I will see you at the next painting table thing or maybe something else. I, don't know. All right. I never know how to end these. Thanks. Take care. Have a wonderful night. <laughs>